Welcome back. Uh, so I will uh, chair this uh, the final session of this uh, workshop. So our first talk is by Professor Shushmita Dash of uh, Mechanical Engineering Department of IISC. She will talk on evaporative micro thruster for nanosatellites. So what, Shushmita? Thank you. Thank you. Every, uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sushmita. I'm an assistant professor in the Mechanical Engineering Department at IISC. Uh, so the title is Capillary Fed Evaporative Microthruster uh, uh, for Micro and Nanosatellite. So what's a nanosatellite? As the name suggests, nanosatellites are basically small scale satellites. Um, often the size of these nanosatellites are on the range of one, uh, 10 centimeter. So it's a 10 centimeter cube and weight can be from 1 to 10 kg. Right? So there's a surge in the number of missions which has nanosatellites in the recent times because of the applications in short term and low cost communication and surveillance mission for innovative science and experimental payloads and planetary exploration and so on. Just to give an example of the numbers, SpaceX recently launched the most 143 satellites in 2021, out of which 110 was micro nanosatellites. And ISRO similarly launched 100 nanosatellites in 2017. Right? So, but these nanosatellites come with its own challenges. First is that how do you propel these nanosatellites? Right? Because of the small length scales and small size scale, small power requirement, which is on the order of 1 to 10 watt, the traditional uh, or the conventional propulsion systems cannot be integrated with these nanosatellites. So we need micro propulsion system, which can be integrated with these uh, micro uh, nanosatellites. So this is just a representation of the different technologies that are there currently in market for propulsion of microsatellites. And you can see, and these are at, at different TRL levels. Right? And you can see that, let's say, the available power is 1 watt. So most of the technologies that are there to get a thrust of 100 micronewton, you need significantly higher power than 1 to 10 watts, which is not feasible. Right? So this is a target that we are looking at. Our goal is to develop a technology which can be utilized to produce 100 micronewton of thrust with 1 watt of input power. This is just an overview of different technologies that are there. I'll not go over it in the interest of time because I have only eight minutes or so. What we have is closest to this vaporizing liquid microthruster. Basically, the idea is that you have liquid in a tank that li is, which, is, which is pressurized. Then that goes to a heating chamber where you have heating occurring, there's vaporization, and that vapor passes through a nozzle to produce a thrust. The simple idea, right? But then again, it has a higher energy requirement because if your heating chamber increases, the amount of sensible heating part also increases. So recently there was a work by a group at Purdue where they looked at these, the, the, basically the idea was this is the nozzle over here, the liquid is held here by capillary forces and then the moment you have heating, the, the vapor eject out and so on. What we are looking at is a capillary fed microthruster, which is the title of my uh, presentation. So basically the idea is that the moment you have water, these are these micro texture, imagine them to be like sponge, right? If you have, if you connect this sponge to any water bath, the liquid wicks up, right? Similar to here. I have some example over here. These are all these porous structure. The moment you, you get in contact with liquid, the self imbibition of liquid happens because of capillary forces. And that's exactly the concept that we are utilizing here. This is a top view and this is a side view. We have an inlet port here and this is the porous structure. The liquid imbibes in the porous structure and then at the back side we have a thin film heater. So the idea is that we are not heating the entire bulk of the liquid. We are heating a very tiny amount of heat liquid which is getting imbibed into this texture and then that vapor passes through a nozzle to produce a thrust. Right? So basically this works without any active parts, without a requirement of a high pressure storage and so on. So basically you have this engineered hydrophobic, hydrophilic and porous network which acts as a thermofluidic valve in itself. Right? So there are different components of this work. One is this device design, what are the pillar size, what type of heating do I need and so on. What is the device fabrication and characterization under vacuum condition. Basically I was telling that these are all pillared structure. So, and in, in, up, in atmosphere, in, uh, in space, you have very low pressure outside, right? So this liquid should not eject out because of this low pressure outside because inside is at a higher pressure. So then how do we design these pillars? What should be the confinement and so on? 
do a thermodynamic analysis because again how do we know that what should be the operating uh, power operating temperature pressure and so on right look at a uh, thermal fluid transport equations all the thermal uh, fluid transport equation to look at the performance of the device determine that what type of thrust can we get for a given power input and then also characterize the thrust that we can get out of it right and not go over the details these are what the pillars look like we did some calculation which showed that we can retain this liquid again remember that we are using water as a working fluid here which is a novelty over here because water is a green propellant right there's no toxic effect of water so basically the water is retained in this capillary uh, structures and uh, yeah so we did this calculation to show that till a temperature of 42 degrees celsius which is a stagnation pressure the water will be retained will be retained in the uh, pillar arrays and when we did thermodynamic analysis to show that under isentropic condition the thrust that you will get is on the order of 100 uh, micronewton for a 1 watt uh, input power the device we have already done the fabrication these are the steps uh, basically what we do is that the device is fabricated on a silicon wafer on a 4 inch silicon wafer we have four devices so it's a 2 centimeter cross 1 centimeter device which is fabricated on a silicon wafer again based upon the design that i showed uh, using standard photolithography process at the top we have a glass which is bonding this silicon wafer and the a glass wafer are bonded and we have path for vapor uh, uh, vapor pathway these are some of the Im uh, images in the interest of time i'll just skip over these details basically these are the devices that are there the top view of the devices and we also have thin film heaters on the back side to provide localized heating these are very preliminary experiments that we have done you can see that this is a device this is a porous structure the moment again this is under ambient lab experiments you see we have put water here the moment it touches this porous structure it immediately wicks into the porous structure and then an application of heating in this case you will see there is a plume of uh, vapor which is coming out again because here you have a buoyancy effect so the plume will go up uh, but under vacuum condition the plume will be straight so these are some of the preliminary experiments that we have done the second part of the work is also characterizing this device under vacuum condition because the if if it operates under ambient condition doesn't mean that it will operate in vacuum condition so we are uh, we are doing this work in collaboration with professor pratikash from aerospace department there's a there's a vacuum chamber here which can go up to 0 0.04 millitor and we have the device and we have the feeding mechanism and we are looking at the characterization under vacuum uh, condition again characterization of wicking and evaporation the second the third part that i mentioned was the thrust characterization and we have built this torsional pendulum uh, based thrust stand basically the device will be mounted here and then we have a lvdt sensor so based upon the deflection that the lvdt measures we can determine that what is the level of thrust so this will again be done so this we have already designed and fabricated and this is housed in the vacuum chamber itself and we have done some calibration experiments to, which show that the force that we will measure is in the order of uh, 50 to 300 micronewton which is what we want to characterize so with that the, to summarize we have designed this passive capillary fed microthruster and we are in the process of integrating it embodying it so that we can actually package it properly numerical modeling of the fluid and thermal transport and then characterization under vacuum condition capillary retention evaporative mass loss and the thrust characterization the work is done by uh, akshay sharma who is a PhD student in my group and Narendra Dev who is a project associate with that I would like to acknowledge gratefully the funding from ISRO uh, through the IAC ISRO uh, space technology cell the IOE funding that we received from IAC and uh, Dr. Pratikash and Dr. Amrit Ambirajan and Dr. Jashwant from ISRO uh, and I'm open to take any question thank you so I think we have time for one or two quick questions yes please so uh, why do you need that uh, hydrophobic coating after the heating part yeah uh, so basically so that is in the design we have not been able to provide that hydrophobic coating yet but the idea if that works it's great because the idea is that you have wicking happening in the porous structure but that it will not go beyond that pillared structure 
the hydrophobic is just acting as a gate so that the liquid does not imbibe but since we are doing bonding of glass and silicon it is difficult right now in the from the fabrication point of view because the bonding is done at a high temperature and hydrophobic coating may not be uh, sustained at that temperature but right now we are targeting to i mean right now whatever we have done is without the hydrophobic coating but uh, also th when you think of the space application you, yeah. uh, how how quickly can you get the thrust here i mean could yes not? that's a very good question so basically for the space application we want the pulse mode and that is what we are characterizing and that's why it's important to keep the thermal mass low and that's why we have been looking at uh, i mean we are using the silicon micro textures and where the basically the heat transfer path is just in the along the thickness of the silicon which is on the order of 500 micrometers so we are we are, we are look, that is a part of this work yeah thank you thank you shushmita